welcome to the webinar on uh, the cervical spine and uh, cervical spine problems are uh, uh, very common as uh, physiotherapist we come across in our uh, regular uh, practice and uh, I'll be keeping the session uh, primarily uh, practical best and uh, in between uh, we'll be uh, showing you some of the slides about the uh, recent advancements about the cervical region and uh, once again very good morning to all the physiotherapists who are joining me across the world and uh, those of you will be due to some reason missing it it will be available uh, in the youtube uh, channel and uh, right so coming to the cervical uh, region uh, let me show you the uh, the cervical spine uh, the model see the cervical spine is primarily divided into uh, upper uh, middle and uh, lower cervical spine just uh, pick it a little bit right the reflection is there yes okay so Coming to the, uh, we have the th uh, three regions, the upper, middle, and the lower cervical spine. And as far as the manual therapy is concerned, uh, we uh, see the upper cervical spine as well as the lower cervical spine. I mean, uh, instead of three divisions, uh, in some anatomical books, you will see the three divisions, that uh, upper cervical spine from CO to C3, and the lower cervical spine uh, from C3 to C7, as we are discussing in manual therapy. But in some books, you will find it as CO to C3, then C3 to C5, and then C5 to uh, so atlantal joint, which is convex surface moving on concave, and C1, C2 is biconvex joint. And this is the C2, and uh, which is uh, very important because this is the first spinous process what we can we can palpate. And while you are listening to my talk, you can just uh, place your hand in the external occipital protuberance, and you can just uh, palpate down. The first bony prominence, what you can feel is the is the C2, and in this gap we can palpate for the uh, the gap. You can palpate for the arch of uh, the atlas, and in the arch of the atlas, uh, from the arch of atlas, if you palpate about uh, one inch lateral and uh, about four millimeter up, you palpate posterior arch of atlas one inch lateral and about four millimeter up, and if you are doing the poking the chin out and tucking the chin in, you can palpate for the occipital atlantal joint where the convex surface is moving with respect to the concave. And as, as that is the CO-C1 joint palpation because, you know, as a manual therapist uh, for effective uh, treatment, effective uh, diagnosis, that uh, specific palpations are extremely uh, important. That means uh, CO-C1, how to palpate? Posture arch of atlas, one inch lateral and about four millimeter up, you can palpate for CO-C1 joint. That is a convex surface moving on concave. And posture arch of atlas, uh, one inch lateral, about one inch lateral and about two millimeter down, you can palpate for the C1, C2 biconvex joint. Posture arch of atlas, one inch lateral and about two millimeter down. And I think it will be better when you are listening, you can just uh, do the palpation so that you have a more better, uh, clear understanding of the palpatory landmarks. Posture arch of atlas, one inch lateral and about two millimeter down, that is the C1, C2 uh, biconvex joint. And what you can do is you palpate with your index and then to feel the moment in the joint, you just rotate it. If you rotate, because at C1, C2, we have the maximum rotation moments happening there. We have the maximum uh, rotation moment uh, happening at, uh, at the C1, C2 region. Okay. And uh, next is the C2, C3. As we are talking in the upper cervical spine, I'll be uh, demonstrating the practicals. I am talking about the landmarks now, and then I'll be showing the practicals, uh, differentiating the upper cervical spine and the lower cervical spine. And I'll be showing uh, some of the uh, thrust techniques uh, also, uh, mobilization techniques and thrust techniques. And next, the C2, C3 palpation from the C2 spinous process. As I told you from the external occipital protuberance, when you are palpating down, the first bony prominence is C2. From C2, you palpate about one inch lateral, 
palpate about one inch lateral and slide down about two mill two millimeter down approximately. And then if you palpate, you can palpate for the articular pillar, and that is the facet joint. So the C21 down, the lateral joints are called as the facet joints. So uh, you palpate for the facet joint, and then you can just tuck the chin in and poke the chin out, and you can feel the movement out there. So I, I just discussed the palpatory landmark for uh, a COC1, C1, C2, and C2, C3 region. And uh, next, uh, uh, next in the sequence, you know, when we are going for the uh, examination, we have to uh, observe uh, for the uh, upper cervical spine. And uh, let me show the practicals on the model. Uh, yes. Just remove the spec. Right. So, for the upper cervicals, and obviously we have to do observations. And then, when we are doing for the observation for the cervical spine, we have the posterior observation, then lateral observation, and the anterior observation. What is more significant? I'll just tell you. We have to do the lateral observation. We have to see if the head is translated more forward. And if the head is translated more forward you know then uh, there is a condition called as upper cross syndrome where we have the tightness of the suboccipital muscles tightness of the upper traps tightness of the uh, levator scapula and tight tightness of the pectoralis minor and pectoralis major and weakness of deep neck flexors and the scapular retractors now coming to the movements of the uh, upper cervical spine so we have uh, these are very essential uh, I just turn a little this side okay Right. So, flexion with the upper pressure. Upper cervical spine flexion, you can just palpate your upper cervical spine region. And uh, you see, upper cervical flexion is while doing the chin tuck, we get upper cervical flexion. And while the poking the chin out, we get upper cervical extension. So, that is what is extremely important to identify whether it is a involvement of the passive component or joint component or it is involvement of the muscular component. So, just tuck the chin in, doing the chin tuck. And... Uh, Yes. Doing the chin tuck and we have to apply the over pressure. One hand is at the occiput, the first wave space is kept anterior to the mental tuberosity and then we are applying the over pressure. Go to the barrier, over pressure. This is for upper cervical spine flexion with over pressure. And if the pain is felt, then it confirms there is periarticular tightness or periarticular injury. And what is the periarticular tightness mean? It is either muscular or it is capsular. In that case, we have to check for the, for the end fills. So that's about the flexion with overpressure. Then poke the chin out, extension with overpressure. We the hand is kept inferior to the chin, and then other hand it is the hood grasp, and uh, we are applying the overpressure. Going to the barrier, one, two, three, four. And if the pain is felt, it confirms there is articular involvement. It confirms there is uh, articular involvement. That means the the joint involvement it confirms. The next we we can go for the uh, lateral flexion side bend. And over pressure, if the pain is felt, that again confirms articular involvement. Again, side bending, over pressure. So that's about uh, we are going for the uh, flexion, extension. Especially, we have to look for the extension. And if extension is painful, that confirms uh, the articular involvement. Then lateral uh, flexion and then the uh, rotation. For rotation, the neck is flexed. Uh, the neck is flexed. And then we are asking the person to rotate. Rotation with overpressure. One, two, three, four. In the same side of rotation, if the pain is felt, that confirms periarticular tightness or injury. And the opposite side, if the pain is felt, that confirms articular involvement. So that is about the uh, upper cervical spine, uh, the active movements with uh, overpressures. And uh, next, we have the passive physiological movements and PAI VMs. So what I'll do is I'll show you now the landmark for the for the PAI VMs uh, on the skeleton. What are the various uh, gliding techniques that I'll just uh, demonstrate. So, right. So what are the various uh, uh, gliding techniques? One is the central PA glide. We can apply the central PA glide, which is applied in the midline. By tip of the thumbs, see posterior arch of atlas, we, we can give. Especially, we are applying the central PA glide from C2 and down, tip of the thumbs over the C2 spinous process, and then we apply the glide. So central PA glide is applied in the midline. 
and then the lateral PA glide which is applied on the lateral joints so as I told you posterior arch of atlas from there about one inch lateral and four millimeter of occipital atlantal joint and there you are giving the posterior to anterior glide similarly for C1 C2 uh, one inch lateral and two millimeter down C1 C2 and you give posterior to anterior glide normally there is no pain if the pain is felt that means the joint is affected similarly from c2 spinous process one inch lateral and two millimeter down you can palpate the lateral pa glide see the angulations and it is uh, making one angulation about 45 degrees from the from the transverse plane but as the as we have got uh, the coefficient of friction it is relatively very low and uh, because of the synovial fluid so if you just give a better can make one small slight cephalic angulation then it will be more effective so uh, lateral pa glide so central pa glide is applied in the midline lateral pa glide is applied on the on the facet and then we have the transverse glide the transverse glide is applied just lateral to the spinous process place the top of the pulp of the thumb just lateral to the spinous process and you can give the transverse glide so this is the transverse glides and before we go for this PIBM this gives a final confirmation of the specific uh, joint uh, involvement and then uh, we can go for uh, the PPI VMs prior to it in the PPI VMs the the mid finger is placed in the interspinous space index and uh, the ring finger is placed on the facet and then we are doing the movements and with flexion the joint is supposed to open up with extension there is approximation of the joints so i'll just take one uh, small uh, uh, small uh, small break uh, after one minute i'll again be i'll be again uh, live